Member statements. The member for Whitby. Sir, I'm proud that our government is supporting Ontario-made innovation with an investment of more than $198 million in research projects at colleges, universities, and research hospitals. Speaker, we know as we continue to respond to the impacts of COVID-19 across all sectors, how important it is to foster research and innovation to help booster economic development in areas like Whitby and other parts of the region of Durham. That's why I'm pleased, Speaker, that Durham College in Whitby has received approximately $788,000 to create a resource for Ontario small and medium-sized enterprises to evaluate, develop, and deploy cybersecurity systems, helping them to detect, prevent, and respond to cyber attacks more efficiently. Speaker, these Ontario research funds will add new infrastructure to the Center for Cybersecurity Innovation at Durham College, giving them access to the technology and equipment necessary to make them leaders, Speaker, absolute leaders of innovation. This also ensures, Speaker, that hardworking students from across the region of Durham have access to the research and innovation that supports them to remain competitive and advance in today's job market. Thank you very much, Speaker. Well Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Halloween is a time for spooky stories, and I have a spooky story about a place where scary things were happening, and it only got scarier. The place was one that should have been bright and happy, but its environment was being attacked dooming the people to unprecedented storms. Beautiful, sunny farmlands and wetlands were cruelly gutted. Wildlife scattered from the only homes they had ever known to make way for highways. They suffered from a deadly pandemic. Heroic frontline workers bravely fought to keep people safe. But they became exhausted, barely hanging on, as their pay was slashed. People tried to call 911. They heard the phone ring and ring, and then it picked up. They took in a breath, ready to finally get the help they needed. But they were trapped on hold. Something terrifying was climbing, climbing ever higher. It was the cost of living. People saw the value of their hard-earned wages plummeting. Children, hungry for education, sat packed together in their classrooms, watching their teachers vanishing one by one. The spookiest part of the story is that it's a true story. But it's not too late for things to be fixed. We can fix it together. Happy Halloween, Ontario. Member statements? The member for Brampton East. South Asians across Ontario and most prominently from the Sikh, Hindu and Jain community celebrated Diwali and Bandishor Divas. Many witnessed the five-day festive season which was full of home-cooked meals, sweets, gifts distributed to friends and family, the illumination of lights, firecrackers and diyas. Uh, speaker, Diwali symbolizes light over spiritual darkness, knowledge over ignorance and the victory of good over evil. And Bandishor Divas is a celebration of the occasion on which Sherry Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji gained freedom from the unjust imprisonment and refused to accept his release until all 52 fellow political prisoners were released with him at the same time. We admire Guru Sahib Ji on his firm stance to protect freedoms and rights of others at his own cost and determination to fight tyranny and injustice. I hope everyone enjoyed this year's Diwali and Bandishor Divas celebrations and once again, wishing all Ontarians uh, a very happy and joyous Diwali and Bandishor Divas. And Speaker, uh, today is October 31st, it's Halloween, and I also want to wi wish all trick-or-treaters across Ontario a very spooktacular Halloween. Thank you, Speaker. Member for Thunder Bay, Superior North. Thank you. 
While in Thunder Bay this weekend, I learned that our hospital is already overflowing with COVID and flu cases and that RSV, the virus that threatens young children, is spreading rapidly. This is concerning. Between the deliberate underfunding of health care and the calculated imposition of Bill 124, our hospitals and clinics are losing staff in droves, and as a result, we are losing the experience of those most qualified to mentor the next generation of health care workers. The health care crisis will continue until the Ford government decides to value those already working in the system. Sadly, today, we are again seeing this government's callous disregard for workers. For months, our lowest education Lowest paid education workers have been trying to negotiate a living wage, and now, rather than negotiating in good faith, the Ford government is set to crush education workers by again taking away their bargaining rights and imposing an unfair settlement. Shame. To healthcare workers, education workers, and all workers keeping our, health, our province operating, thank you for your care, compassion, and dogged persistence. We see you, we appreciate you, and we stand with you. Well done, you. Member statements, the member for Oxford. Mr. Speaker, tomorrow is the beginning of the ninth annual Carbon Monoxide Awareness Week, which was created as part of my private member's bills, the Hawkins Genic Act. This act is named after the Hawkins Genic Foundation, started by John Genic. John was the uncle of dedicated, of dedicated OPP Constable Lori Hawkins, who tragically passed away due to carbon monoxide poisoning along with her husband and children. The exhaust vent that funneled carbon monoxide from the basement fireplace through the chimney was blocked and allowed dangerous amounts of carbon monoxide to spread throughout their home for days. In memory of the Hawkins family, Ontario homes with fuel-burning appliances or attached garage are now required to have a carbon monoxide detector installed. John has also been instrumental in increasing awareness of the carbon monoxide alarms across Canada, along with the help of fire departments and the Insurance Bureau of Canada. Carbon monoxide is known as the silent killer because it is colourless, odourless and tasteless gas. I encourage all Ontarians to check their alarms and ensure that vents and chimneys are clear and that fuel-burning appliances are serviced this week. The more we raise awareness about the dangerous carbon monoxide, the more lives will be saved. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to use this time to raise awareness of carbon monoxide safety and to keep Ontarians alive. Member statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I wear an MK23 T-shirt with the words "Fight Strong" written on the back. MK stands for Melissa Kingsley. 23 was her jersey number, and she did fight strong. Melissa Kingsley was a dedicated, straight-A student and an exceptionally talented athlete. She was a cherished daughter of Jill and Leanne Kingsley, and a loving sister to Mathieu and Mireille. During her young life, Mel Melissa played many sports, and she excelled at hockey. She graduated from the Sudbury Lady Wolves hockey program during a scholarship with the University of Ottawa GG's women's hockey team. In 2016, Melissa was diagnosed with sarcoma and began extensive treatments. In 2018, Melissa lost her battle with cancer, and Sudbury lost a phenomenal member of our community. Today marks the fourth year of her tragic passing, and although she's no longer with us, Melissa's memory is very much alive in Sudbury. In her honour, Speaker, the Melissa Kingsley Memorial Scholarship Fund was established. This fund is awarded to student athletes pursuing a post secondary education to demonstrate Melissa's passion for hockey and dedication to learning. As well, with help and contributions from the many, many friends and family of Melissa Kingsley, the Sudbury Lady Wolves, and countless community members, the Women's Hockey Academy in Sudbury now hosts yearly MK23 Memorial Tournaments for female hockey players. All proceeds are donated to the Melissa Kingsley Fund. Today, I wear an MK23 t shirt with the words Fight Strong written on the back. MK stands for Melissa Kingsley. 23 was her jersey number. And speaker, she continues to fight strong. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
so glad to be back in the House today. And, and, and during our time away, I had many opportunities to reach out to my constituents and enjoy the many community events while connecting with the residents of Etobicoke Lakeshore. And there have been plenty of good news to share. Mr. Speaker, the long-awaited construction of not one, but two Etobicoke Lakeshore schools have begun. Thanks to the parents, the faculty, and of course the Minister of Education for helping to make this happen. St. Leo's Catholic Elementary School has broken ground, supported by an investment of $22.7 million, which included which includes an additional funding of $10.3 million. The redevelopment will also include the renovation of the school's heritage piece, which allows the students to learn what happened in the past. The new school will include 500 student spaces, three new childcare rooms, and one new early on childcare family center. Our second school that broke ground is the Holy Angels Catholic School. It's uh, being rebuilt and uh, is supported by a government investment of $22.5 million and will include 600 student spaces, five childcare rooms, and 88 childcare spaces. Mr. Speaker, I am grateful for the opportunity to fill my schedule with meetings with constituents and going to many community events, such as the Long Branch Tree Festival, the 15th anniversary of the conferment of the U.S. Congressional Gold Medal on Tibetan's Dalai Lama, building up training center, and this weekend I was at the Mimico Market where I picked up these earrings. Please make sure to support your local uh, markets this uh, Christmas time and pick up those extra gifts. Support local and have a great time in your communities. Here, here. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Beaches East York. Mr. Speaker, at the young age of 18, Reese Fallon had a fiery passion for politics and making her community a better place. She radiated positivity, kindness, and never failed to light up any room she was in. Reese would have been 22 years old this year and a recent graduate from the McMaster Nursing Program. She was an active member of the Beaches East Shore community and ultimately a force to be reckoned with. <clears throat> Sadly, her life was tragically cut short on July 22, 2018 in the Danforth shooting. While there will never be enough words to describe the profound loss this was, there continues to be an outpouring of love and support to honour Reese in our riding. This November, next week actually, the Reese Fallon Laneway will be unveiled. It is located south of Girard Street East, just a hop, skip and a jump from Malvern Collegiate Institute, where Reese was a dedicated and engaged student. With over 3,000 signatures obtained for its creation, the laneway is a testament to the impact Reese continues to have in our community and amongst family and loved ones. This laneway will create space for future generations to remember Reese's legacy. It is a special location that pays homage to a spot where she spent much of her childhood playing with her sisters and friends. It will be a place for people to celebrate, reminisce, and feel her presence and comfort. To her loving family, Claudine, Doug, Quinn, Riley, and Sadie, we promise you that we will continue to honour Reese's legacy in everything we do. Thank you. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Chatham Kent Leamington. Thank you, Speaker. Of the many unique and beautiful features of my riding, Peely Island maintains a special place in my heart. At 42 square kilometres, Peely Island is the largest island in Lake Erie and the southernmost populated place in Canada. Peely Island is a peaceful, nature lover's paradise and one of the most species rich, biodiverse regions in Canada. The brilliant sunrises over Peely Island's 200 year old lighthouse and natural beaches have been enjoyed and photographed for generations, while the evening sunsets over the west shore are shared with family and friends at the popular Peely Island Winery Pavilion. With the tradition of grape growing and winemaking that dates back 170 years, Peely Island is the birthplace of Canada's wine industry. Here, Peely Island Winery sustainably operates and cares for over 700 acres of meticulous farmland in Canada's warmest wine growing region and many of the carefully curated wines have won international awards and continue to be the favourites of connoisseurs around the world. Accessible by ferry, private boat or plane, the island's charm, hospitality and tranquility inspired our legendary Margaret Atwood to take up and maintain a residence there. Although permanent residents number less than 300, 
seasonal tourism that includes open-air music festivals, an annual half marathon, and the famous fall pheasant hunts, currently um, ongoing and dating back to 1932, grow the population to nearly 1,500 during peak times. This year, Peely Island made history again by electing its first female mayor, Kathy Miller. Mayor-elect mayor Miller is a seasoned media professional turned innkeeper of the beautiful and historic Wandering Dog Inn. The community and the entire region are fortunate to have such a capable, caring, hardworking community advocate to serve as leader. If you're in need of some respite from the city and are seeking fresh lake air and a unique, affordable, family-friendly holiday, I encourage you to consider the Jewel of Lake Erie, where you can set your watch to island time, explore ecotourism at its finest by bicycle or golf cart, and enjoy the food, wine, and warm hospitality of our special community. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Today is Halloween, the spookiest day of the year, and I uh, I want to commend the residents of Brampton North for beautifully and creatively decorating their homes. Decorations may seem small, but they go a long way, showing community spirit and adding to the vibrance of our neighborhoods. I wish my constituents a happy and safe Halloween. I would also ask everyone to resist the urge to pull out their Christmas decorations and, and deck the halls tomorrow or the next few days following. I respectfully ask that we wait instead until after November 11th, Remembrance Day. Instead, let us all attend services in our communities to honour our heroes and reflect on the many brave souls that made the ultimate sacrifice so that we may live in a proud and free country. And out of respect for them, let's hold off on the Christmas lights. Speaker, I am fortunate to have been born and raised in Brampton, a city that cherishes our diversity, celebrates our culture, and values our freedoms. But these values have come at a cost, a proud military tradition of sacrifice in the pursuit of peace. We see their heroism in moments of free speech and free expression, we feel their sacrifice in our places of democracy, including right here in this legislative chamber. Speaker, I invite the residents of Brampton to attend services at Chinkuzi Park or at the Ahmadiyya Mubarak Mosque on November 6th, and especially the ceremony at the Memorial Cenotaph on Remembrance Day itself, where together as a community, we will remember. Thank you. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.